tell me about the work that you did regarding oil rig decommissioning. Uh, yeah, so throughout the course of the semester, we worked on a project with um, three other of my group members in my land use class, and we um, were supposed to figure out the process that goes into decommissioning, such as like the laws and jurisdiction that goes into it, the biological species that have been maybe impacted by it, um, different forms of decommissioning. There's like such as toppling in place, uh, reefing it, or fully pulling it out of the ocean. Um, it was really interesting to speak with different agencies. We were able to speak with most of the California agencies who got a response from either through email or um, some of them were able to set up a phone conference. So that was really interesting. And then we also got in touch with a private um, consulting firm that works a lot in the Gulf Coast about uh, decommissioning oil rigs and specifically with the reefing process and how that goes. Um, there's pretty big differences between the Gulf of Mexico's laws associated with decommissioning as opposed to California, but because we don't have a lot of information about California, since that hasn't happened a lot, we focused a lot of our research in the Gulf of Mexico and the North Sea, because that's where it, it's actually taken place in like to completion. You mentioned biological species. How does that play into it? Uh, so, off California, there's a, obviously a lot of biodiversity off our coastline, and when these oil rigs are put in place, um, many or most of them are over 25 years old at this point, so there is a very um, diverse ecosystem that are utilizing these platforms because it's a hard surface and when you put anything hard in a marine environment, um, it, it, it attracts wildlife and habitats or it like promotes habitat growth. Um, so basically what's happening right now is there's a lot of um, rocky fish and um, hard shelled fish that are utilizing these platforms and when the uh, part of the debate is if we completely remove these platforms how will the, that impact the like artificial reef that's already been made um, there's a lot of research going on a lot of research going on right now um, Dr. Mountain Love <laughs> He is researching the rocky fish, uh, which is a threatened species, which um, under the under CESA, which is the California Endangered Species Act, uh, which that plays into how the permitting process for it, because it's threatened, they need to get a permit from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife so that they can either, like, so that when they impact these species, it'll be legal, I guess. Um, but another argument for full removal or against partial decommissioning is that they, um, these ecosystems are considered to be fake, like they weren't there in the first place, uh, or they're only there because we put these platforms there, but the, the argument is kind of, I don't know, one of the things that we've come across is that there isn't necessarily like a really detailed outline of what our shelf looked like, like our continental shelf or just closer to the coastline looked like before we started putting like platforms out there. And so we don't really have a good comparison of what happened before the platforms to after. So we don't know if that's true that these ecosystems could even be considered fake. Like we could have destroyed something putting them in that impacted these species during that time. So.